Hello, 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 and welcome to Create Now. This is Guitar. We're just after Guitar Picking 3. Today's date is the... The time is 12.19 and the date is... The 5th of... It's Tuesday. And it's the 5th of May 2020. That's pretty cool. So what have we got for you today? Finger picking. More finger picking. What? What? Yeah. So the main ones we we need to work, think about are just count to four. So thumb is one, index finger is two. This is in relation to counting. So one, two, three, four. Th thumb, index, middle, ring. Thumb, index, middle, ring. Thumb, index, middle, ring. Just down, okay? You can go up the inverse of that if you want, but I'm just going to keep it simple. So all down, okay? Some of the easiest chords we can do are E, D, and G. Okay. We will be keeping our index finger on the G string, middle finger on the B string, and ring finger on the little E string, thumb on that big E string. Now, if we're doing a chord which the bass line, which the lowest note, which is the, the root, okay? The lowest note you play is the root note. The foundation of the gaff. Alright, G. Um, we're gonna move the root note around to do inversions, okay? Also, could be thought of as a walking bass line. So, how we did that was we moved our thumb, we kept up the 1, 2, 3, 4, which is thumb, index, middle, ring, 1, 2, 3, 4. Ideally, a lot slower than that. One, two, three, four. And every time we said one, to keep the things a little bit interesting, we move the lowest note around, which creates an inversion. Woo! So instead of just having a texture like this, we could have a texture like this. Or this. Or this. <laughs> so, here's an example. One, two, three. Moving the bass note around. That sounds better if you put emphasis on the beat one, just to help it sing out a bit more. It's a little bit more impressive in the short term, anyway. Just helps you keep track. Start singing. <laughs> so the thumb is going E string, A string, D string. Okay. Now, if we're doing a, a thing like an A chord, we're going to do the exact same thing, but we're going to start with our thumb on the A string. Okay, that's the root note. Okay, so that's on our picking hand. That's thumb on the A string. Index is staying where it is on the G. Middle finger is playing B, and ring finger is playing little E. So the thumb will move around, we're going to go A string, D string, A string, and then up to the E string. Alright, A string, D string, we can't go down any lower, so we're going to go up, back up to the A string and back up to the E string. That's the. That's putting the fifth. It's playing with the fifth there. The E. Okay. So, G, moving bass line. E string. B string. D, D, D string. That back up to the A string. Lovely. Now. We're going to do the same example with the A chord, um, but with this one, so everything's the exact same, we're going to move our thumb down one string, because the lowest note on the A chord is A. We're going to create different inversions, even though they're kind of the same ish, I won't get into it. <laughs> the fifth above and the fifth below. Alright, so we're going to go root note, fifth above, root note, fifth below. Alright, here we go. 
two, three, four. One, two, three, four. D string, two, three, four. A string, two, three, four. E string, two, three, four. Back to the start. A string, two, three, four. D string, two, three, four. A string, two, three, four. E string, two, three, four. Back to G. Uh, or we'll try D. Do we dare? <laughs> it's gonna be what? You can make up your own ones anyway. I'd like to have the F sharp on the thumb there, but it might be a bit advanced. So we'll just keep it simple. So on the D, we're going to start on the D string. And we can't go down, so we're going to go up. So we're starting on the D string. The lowest note on D is the D, this D string, which is D. Then we're going to, for the next count of four, so one, that's D string, three, four. The next count of four is going to be the A string, which is the... doing the E which about to burst the brain cell here. I think it's like a f it's not sus two, it's a fucking E and A, E and A. It's the fifth D and A, sorry. I'm going blank. It's a sus two. Yeah, it's a sus two, but it's an octave down, which makes it a. Oh God, what's the opposite of a ninth minus a second? Uh, I'm going blank, but it's uh, it puts an e in the bass, so it'd be e slash a. Okay, if you're writing this in your copybook, so we're changing we're changing the root note. Okay, from an A chord, one two. That's the A string, D string, which is now the fifth above. Back to the A string, which is the root note. And then we're going to a sus two. Suspend the second. Um, which is the E. And then we're going back to A. And we get a little bit... Um, Sorry, I changed, did the wrong chord there. <laughs> Went straight on the D chord. Yeah, but the, the sus two stays. stays. Sure, we'll, we'll have a little gook. A little gook. What's the exact terminology here? Um, a to E is a sus two. I don't know. I don't know how to type this into Google. E sus two. Uh, e plays E suspended second. Uh, right. I'm confused. Back to D. D string two, three, four. A string two, three, four. E slash A. And that's why the E sounds a bit off, it's like, oh jeez, what's going on there? But it's not in the 135. So if you can, if you're feeling very cheeky, put your thumb in there, if you can, on the second fret. So, uh, that's a proper on the third in the bass. Some people, I don't really have the thumbs for it. I, I never really do the uh, fret, use my thumb to fret the, the big E string on the second fret. Personally, I like to use my index finger for it, and I rearrange the, the entirety of my other fingers to support that. Um, uh, it's just, it's just not for me, the whole thumb. I, saying that, I do it all the time. 
-hmm. I'll only do it in a passing note really, like for a second. Because... Yeah, you can do it if you want. And it sounds great. Sounds great. But it does, uh, for me it doesn't... Kinda, kinda hurts the old thumb. Alright. That's D. Let's do the old E string. Starting on the big E. One, two, three, four, down to the A string. Which is that sweet B. Opposite of that, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, That. It can take a long time to get that coordination, like one, two, two. They get that synced up with their. <laughs> get synced up with your body. Uh, it's not hand eye coordination, just getting more co coordinated. It takes a long, long time. For your fingers to do what you want them to. You'd be there, like, looking at your fingers, going, come on! <laughs> And moving your fingers around with your other hand, trying to get it right. Um, let's call the suspended chord anyway, that E floating around in that D chord. Alright, if you want to get rid of that sus, put in the index finger, but it, it, it's just for an example, don't worry about it. So we got our A chord, we got our finger picking. So I hope your mind is going wild, you're thinking, oh my god, what happens if I stick my index finger, middle finger and ring finger up one string and then put my little finger and the little E string and then whoa! So the bottom four strings each have a string each and your thumb will only be playing the uh, top two strings. That seems like an amazing idea. I, I use that mainly for, so basically having all your fingers on the guitar. Pluck notes, we have to pluck all of them at the same time. You need an even volume across all the strings. So, if I was doing something like a C chord, that's all the strings being plucked at the same time. It sounds quite different from strumming. This is plucked with all the fingers at the same time. So, you're just finger picking all of them. And here's a pluck. Down strum, or here's up strum. Here's squeezed all at the same time. Plucked. So yeah, it's, it's, it's all different sound, I'm just plucking all these at the same time. It's kind of instant gratification, isn't it? It's kind of very clean. Because often when you have a plecky at this sound, in between the strings, you'll have a note ringing out, and a note somewhere else in the guitar you want to hit. So in between it, you got to hit a dead string. Dead string, what I mean by that is just a string which you're muting. Some big recordings like Def Leppard and all them, the big boys, they got down to recording chords but just string by string. How good is that? To get rid of all this. Uh, for a lot of octave chords. For recordings, sometimes they just only have two strings on the guitar. It's like, <laughs> Just because otherwise you have all this this sound building up. Um, an octave co uh, chord is when you let's say if you get the D, uh, say you get an A chord, and you only want the octaves, you would. two notes together, the one and the eight of the scale, and that will give you an octave, like this. 
go to any open string and then fret the 12th uh, note on it. So here's the little E. Here's the B. I'm fretting the open B string and the, the, uh, the 12th fret. If you're ever doing intonation, checking how in tune your guitar is with itself, you'll need to know how close these two sounds are. Oh gee, that's awful. Mm. Mm, that's not too bad. It's a bit off. Mm. Well, oh, the E is not too bad at all. Hmm. So you can, when you're, you know, getting out your when you start getting getting in, into guitar and you start looking after your instrument, filing it down, putting getting all the the lovely files for the frets, file down your frets and all this stuff, um, and you're adjusting your thrust rod, uh, depending on the temperature, the weather, and all this messing, you will um, start to want to change the intonation of your guitar so it's more in tune the whole way across the instrument. Because often you'll be playing your chords, you know, like open chords, which means there's open strings ringing out, and then you'll want to play something else up the neck. It sounds fine actually. But normally that would, this would be quite out of tune, like. Or something like that. But, um, just because the, uh, the frets and the neck. Could be too much. The bend wouldn't. Could be too much. Too many microtonal, microtonal dissonance, or one of those things. Finger picking. So. G, E minor, C. Yeah, that's definitely the best thing for you to be at. Keep, hopefully, even be practicing while I'm talking. Hmm. We're gonna go over the G major chord scale. Ba ba ba, A B C D E F G. because we don't know how to do B minor yet because we're still learning our bar chords. B minor chords. You gotta do an A minor with the back of your hand. Alright, so you're gonna have to start practicing. This is getting a bit too advanced. You gotta start. Imagine you're doing an A minor chord, right? But this time do it with the back of your hand. So instead of using your middle ring and index finger for bar chords, we're gonna learn to do an A minor without our index finger. Alright, and lie down your index finger so it's lying on the notch so you're practicing doing that bar shape. Alright, so your index finger is lying down on the, the white nut at the, where the strings bend at the... Uh, is it calf joint? Scarf joint, that's the name of it, the angle of the, the guitar. They have two bits of wood and glue it and all that stuff. Anyway, we won't get into the guitar manufacturing right now. So for A minor, all you're doing is raising for B minor, you're raising the pitch of A minor by two semitones. So A minor, A sharp minor, B minor. Okay, simple as that. So. This is it. I'm just tipping away at it because it's going to take you forever to learn bar chords. Because it's, it's hard going. Practice doing A minors with the, the back of your hand without the index finger. Mm. 
and then practice doing E's, so I'm moving the A minor to E. A minor, E, A minor, E, A minor, E, A minor. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna give you two things to play around with while you're, because you, maybe you're bored off your head or something, I don't know. Uh, if you want something to sound a bit Spanishy, <laughs> just do an E chord and bring it up one semi, one fret. Okay. Same thing with uh, a, a, an A chord. Okay. So do an E chord with the back of your hand. So we're using our middle finger on the A string, middle finger on the D string, middle finger on the G string. So we're strumming away. Now I'm going to bring it up one semi tone. Did you hear that? Yeah. So all you're doing is just getting your E shape and bringing it up one fret towards the sound hole. Okay? Normal E, slide. Up one, raising the pitch by one. Make sure your little E, B, and G are all ringing out on your big E. Okay, here's one more, and that's that's class because once you get you have a bit of fun with this, and then you can start putting your index finger in on that bar, and then you get an F chord. That's gonna take you two weeks or something. That's looking into the future, but it's just fun practice. It just sounds kind of cool. And then once you get your index finger up and run. An F chord. I'm moving around to an A, and because you'll have applied all the music theory I've been teaching you for the last 80 lessons, I think it's, I think we're at 80 music lessons right now, and free for for net for this short time. All right. So, and here's one more, an A major chord. All right, bring that up one one semitone. It's got sound spooky. That's the kind of chord they use, and we'll see you after the break. I oh, know who did it. You know, the kind of cough dramas after the break. It's kind of unsettling. So that's just the A chord brought up on semitone. You can get all sorts of amazing sounds moving that E shape around. Just moving that E shape around the guitar. That would be called open tuning. Um, so I'm just gonna move, you can get all sorts of lovely bits of textures just moving that E shape around. Ideally you can use this as an, an excuse to practice your um, playing guitar without your index finger. Chord. Then you can incorporate that index finger. You got all your bar chords. All of them. A few weeks down the line, when you can practice switching between an A minor and an E, uh, an A major and an E chord. In a few weeks' time, um, you'll know all your chords in all the positions because you can go. Um, all right, getting off topic, so I'll leave it there. So we talked a little bit about went over finger picking, a little bit more bar chords, um, and some little interesting things. Boys, some open tunes, keep you going. All right, have a great one. Stay focused. Um, and it's a very very long journey, so just don't get frustrated. It's it's a, it's a long one. It's a long slog. It'll be grand. Takes a lot of time. Takes a lot of time, persistence, and all the rest of it. If you get any sore hands around, just take breaks. Goodbye.